The movie begins in the hustling, bustling city of Tokyo, Japan, with the main leads of our story Abimanyu Kaul and Anwita Chauhan living together. The two of them are a couple and deeply in love with one another. These two lovebirds are not just surviving but thriving, sharing a blissful content life together. Abimanyu, affectionately known as Abhi, is a sharp young computer engineer, living an ostensibly ordinary life in Japan. One fine day at work, in the bustling Akira Games office, Abhi and his buddy Zafar are passionately engaged in a video game. The two of them are enthusiastic about another game that they created and are sure that it will be approved. However, the excitement is short-lived when they are summoned to headquarters and discover that their colleague, Stan, has swiped their game and presented it as his own. Zafar is livid, ready to explode, but Abhi, ever the calm one, manages to pull him away from the brewing storm. On the other hand, Anwita, our spirited heroine, is out and about with a pack of dogs. She's spending her summer as a dog walker to earn some extra cash. This is when Abhi surprises her. She squeals in excitement upon seeing him. It turns out that they have been living together for the past three years, and it's clear they are each other's soulmates. Later that night, Zafar and Abhi can be seen sulking around at their place. Anwita, ever the peacemaker, tries to lift their spirits, but Zafar is still seething about the theft and Abhi's silence. He begs Anwita to persuade Abhi to confront their boss, but she loyally supports her boyfriend. But before Zafar can perish from tension, Abhi tells him not to worry, and that they will talk with their boss on Monday. Zafar, visibly relieved, apologizes for doubting Abhi. Seeing the tension evaporating from the atmosphere, Anwita insists they hit the town to shake off the day's stress, party, and enjoy the weekend. The trio heads out to paint the town red, partying and living it up, blissfully unaware of the twisted fate has in store for them, especially for Abhi. The next morning, the peaceful bubble bursts. Abhi is jolted awake by his ringing phone, and the news on the other end is a punch to the gut. He is informed that his father is gravely ill and on his final bed. In that instant, Abhi's life takes a dramatic turn. Abhi and Anwita hastily catch the next flight to Orlando, where Abhi's father, Dashrath Kaul, the Prime Minister of India, lies critically ill in a hospital. Anwita is stopped from meeting him because of security protocols, but Abhi goes in. His father, on his final bed, informs Abhi of his impending public appearance and entrusts his loyal aide, Akbar, to support him, urging Abhi to stay strong. The next day, at the press conference, as Dashrath's health bulletin is read, the press mercilessly bombards Abhi with questions. Initially composed, Abhi soon crumbles under the pressure and is immediately whisked away by Akbar. Days blur together as Abhi anxiously watches his father's battle with cancer. Each day brings a new challenge until the inevitable happens and Dashrath Kaul succumbs to his illness. That day, Abhi is finally permitted to see Anwita, who has been isolated in a hotel room. Abhi collapses into her arms, grief-stricken, and she holds him close to her heart, letting him pour his heart out. The next day, Abhi and Anwita fly to Varanasi to perform the final rites for his father. Afterward, they are transported to New Delhi, the epicenter of Indian politics. Abhi finds himself thrust into the political arena, a place he never desired to be. On the other hand, at the headquarters of the Akhil Bharatiya Kranti Party, ABKP, the leaders are in turmoil. After the passing of Dashrath, who was also a member of the ABKP, Shubhodeep Ganguly was made the president of the party and the interim prime minister. All of them are worried because the current year is the year of the election, and they need to elect a new face for their party, or else this will be the end of their career. As all of them go through different plans and ideas to save themselves, one of them comes forward with the name of Abhimanyu. He presents the idea that Abhi should be nominated as the candidate for the post of Prime Minister of India. After some discussion, they all agree on the facts that Abhi is the ideal candidate, inexperienced, easy to manipulate, and likely to win public favor. The scene then shifts to Chohan's house, where Anwita is doing yoga when a few guards enter the house. She is surprised at the intervention, but it turns out that they came with Abhi. He pulls her aside to deliver earth-shattering news that in three days, he will be sworn in as the Prime Minister of India. Anwita panics, reminding him of his promise never to enter politics. She tells him that he would be used by every politician out there, and that their lives together will be torn apart. This is when he reveals that his father's last wish on his dying bed was for Abhi to take over after he is gone. She calms down a little, but the worry lingers, and both know deep down that their lives are about to change forever. A few days later, Abhi and Anwita plan a dinner date, but Abhi shows up fashionably late, which pushes Anwita over the edge. The night quickly spirals into an argument, 
He manages to soothe her tears with an apology, but the situation worsens when she learns that his new salary is a paltry 50,000 rupees a month, a mere pittance compared to his lucrative earnings in Japan. Her anger reaches its peak when he informs her that they can't live together unless they get married. Dropping to one knee, he proposes, but Anwita flatly refuses, saying she won't marry just to appease societal expectations. Abi sighs, understanding where she is coming from, and asks Akbar to get them an apartment. The day of his appointment finally arrives. Dressed up for the occasion he goes and meets her, but she doesn't greet him properly. It turns out that she is an orphan who lives with her maternal aunt. After losing her parents, Anwita has deep-seated fears of losing loved ones, explaining her guarded behavior. He understands her hesitation and doesn't get angry. We then fast forward to the grand ceremony where Abi is sworn in as the youngest prime minister of India. The proceedings are telecasted live, all over the country, making Abi the talk of the town. Some people call his position a result of nepotism. Others believe that his young mind will bring prosperity to the country. After the ceremony, Abi is taken to his office to meet his cabinet and the people who will help him run the country. Everyone congratulates him and welcomes him as their new leader. His right hand, Suhasini Singh Deo, the cabinet secretary, introduces him to every member, taking him through all the protocols. Later that night, Abi visits Anwita, with his ever-present security, and Akbar in tow. He finds her inebriated, and she drunkenly congratulates him on his new role. When Akbar calls, she becomes jealous, adding more fuel to the fire. Abi answers the call to learn that, instead of an apartment, Akbar has secured a bungalow, and they must move in immediately before anyone can get news about them. He hangs up to find Anwita passed out, and gently carries her to the car. Onlookers are stunned to see their prime minister carrying a girl, but are wise enough to remain silent. They move into their new home, and when Akbar tries to speak about the situation, Abhi firmly states that Anwita is his support system, silencing him. The next morning, when Abhi is going through his fully packed schedule for the day, Anwita arrives, complaining about a headache. His assistant stops mid-sentence, too stunned to speak. Seeing her disheveled state, Abi asks Akbar to provide Anwita with medicine and coffee. He nods, and she leaves to get fresh. The scene highlights the significant influence Anwita has on Abi and underscores how their relationship, while supportive, is somewhat awkward for those around them. Later, Abi can be seen tackling long-neglected special cases, meeting with officials to demand updates and expedite processes. After the officials leave, he starts going through some files but is interrupted by a call from Anwita. He picks up the call to find a happy Anwita, thanking him for the coffee. Abi smiles but feels a bit awkward under Akbar's watchful gaze. A few days later, Abi started working on his first reform. When the finance minister, Mr. Murley, arrives with the tax amendment files, he questions the relief that should be given to the youth of the nation. Mr. Murley calls this a complicated issue and leaves with a vague promise to investigate. But that night, while watching the television, Abhimanyu is disheartened to see Murli on television, mockingly referring to him as a good boy, making him a laughingstock. The next morning, Abhi wakes up to find cartoons of himself with the label, good boy. Although initially disheartened, Akbar's encouragement reignites his resolve to press on. As Abhi sifts through his emails, one particular letter catches his eye, a plea from a 50-year-old woman by influential people, with no action taken against the perpetrators. Determined to address such grievances, Abi instructs Akbar to establish a grievance cell. Akbar's eyes well up, seeing what a fine man Abhimanyu is. Their conversation is interrupted when Anwita arrives at his door. He leaves the discussion, only to find that she is angry because he is going to Agra without her. Since she is the one true love of his life, he does not have the ability to turn her down, so he agrees to take her with him. Her excited squeal draws attention, and Akbar, noting the flustered bodyguard's reaction, dryly comments that such scenes will soon become routine. Abi reaches Agra for the national executive meeting, but there is chaos. It turns out that Morley, after publicly deriding Abi, has now caused a stir by misbehaving with Shubhodeep, all in a bid to secure a chief minister position for a relative. The situation disturbs him, and on his way to the Taj Mahal, he confesses to Anwita that he took on this responsibility to honor his father's wishes, but now feels overwhelmed and lost amidst political infighting and unmet promises. An important case that is not being processed any further, a finance minister who took the advice to his ego, is causing turmoil. The government is so fractured that the opposition doesn't even need to intervene to cause trouble. Anwita reassures him, reminding him of his problem-solving nature, and encouraging him to persist. The two of them then visit the Taj Mahal, a symbol of love, together holding hands. 
They enjoy their time together, like they used to in Japan, carefree and without the weight of the world on their shoulders. Unbeknownst to them, someone is capturing their intimate moments together. The next day, Abi is jolted awake by a call from Akbar, who asks him to turn on the television. To his horror, the news is plastered with videos and photos of him and Anwita enjoying their time at the Taj Mahal. The paparazzi even managed to snap some scandalous shots of them living together. The revelation that the Prime Minister of India is in a live-in relationship spreads like wildfire. The public reaction is overwhelmingly negative, with only a few supporting his right to a private life. As Abi gets ready to go to work, Anwita breaks down, blaming herself for all this chaos. But Abi wipes her tears and embraces her, reassuring her that they will get through this together. Abi then arrives at the headquarters of ABKP, where every party member is present, even Mr. Murley. Shubhodeep begins the conversation, trying to break the ice. But his small talk is interrupted by Mr. Ajay, who says that their party has some ethics, and to violate them will cause trouble for everyone. Murley sides with Ajay, but Abi silences him with a firm inquiry about the tax reform advice. Murley tries to brush it off, but Abi's stern demeanor shuts him down. Later, Abi Manu attends a high-stakes hockey match between Pakistan and India. The crowd greets him with boos, not cheers. He smiles and takes the microphone. He tells the audience that he never degraded anyone in his personal life, but today instead of degrading each other, everyone should focus on the game. The game starts with Abi scoring the first goal, and everyone starts applauding. Murli watches the news of Abi's triumphant goal with a dark expression. On the other hand, Shubhadeep reads the newspaper to find that Murli is set to become the deputy prime minister. He calls Akbar and comments on Abhi's clever maneuver, that by elevating Murli to a powerless position, he effectively neutralizes him. Shubhadeep laughs and hangs up. Meanwhile, at his residence, Abhi finds Anwita in distress. She hasn't eaten all day and feels unwell. As Abhi orders pizza, Anwita rushes to the washroom and vomits. Abhi's world tilts when she admits she's pregnant. That night a doctor is called to check on her, and when the doctor questions about the father of the child, Anwita stutters. But when Abhi comes in the room and claims the paternity of the child, Akbar smiles, and the doctor stands, taken aback. Later, Akbar takes her to the side and asks what she wants to do with the child. With tears in her eyes, she confesses she wants to keep it. Akbar hugs her tightly, showing his unwavering support. Thus, amidst political turmoil and public scrutiny, Abhi and Anwita brace for a new chapter, their bond stronger than ever, as they prepare to welcome their child into the world. At the stroke of midnight, Abhi receives an urgent call from Akbar. An intelligence brief demands his immediate attention. At the brief, he finds out about an agent they caught, and the interrogation has yielded some very shocking information. The full inquiry report, set to be made public in three months, promises to be explosive. Abi gets back home to find Anwita packing some stuff. He gets frightened, but she tells him that she is just distracting herself because she is craving kulfi. The time, being 4 a.m., initially makes him hesitant, but her insistence and his inability to see her distress compel him to agree. He asks her security officer Faiz, who is hesitant at first, but agrees on his persuasion. Faiz drives the two of them to the kulfi spot, only to find a drunk kulfi vendor. Nevertheless, the vendor serves them kulfi, astonished at the sight of the prime minister and his girlfriend indulging in such a humble treat. The next morning, Shubhadeep is called to Abhi's office to discuss some matters. It turns out that the presidential election is around the corner, and they need to nominate their candidate. Abhi tells him that after thinking for the whole night, he came up with the name. Abhi kneels down in front of Shubhadeep, saying that he has worked with Abhi's father and even before him, for the betterment of the people of their nation. Abhi reveals that he is going to nominate Shubhadeep as their candidate. Turns out that Abhi and Akbar's strategy to secure Shubhadeep's loyalty before the public inquiry report is revealed, seems to be working. A few days later, Shubhadeep took the oath as president. That night, he comes home to find distressed Anwita. The two of them were supposed to go out and celebrate Anwita's birthday, but he came back super late. Despite her disappointment, she hugs him tightly, understanding the weight of his responsibilities. The next morning, Akbar fills Abhi in about the inquiry report that is coming out in a few days. Their conversation is interrupted by a phone call from Ajay, and Akbar puts the phone on speaker. Not knowing that Abhi is also listening to the call, Ajay tells Akbar that the people are not happy with the government, and some even want Ajay to be the next prime minister. Akbar just laughs at him and hangs up the call. 
After the call ends, Abi's attention is grabbed by the furious Anwita. She is painting a fetus and gets angry because she doesn't like feeling sick, with all the mood swings. Amidst political machinations and personal upheavals, Abi navigates his dual roles as a leader and a partner, gently reassuring her, emphasizing that her feelings are normal and everything will be alright. Later on his way to work, he calls his friend, Zafar, and asks if they can link a person's national ID card to the app they were working on. Zafar, ever the problem solver, promises to get it done in 15 days, bringing a satisfied smile to Abi's face. On the other hand, Ajay and Murli are having tea together when they discuss the fact that they made a mistake by selecting Abi as the prime minister. Initially thinking he would be easily controlled, they now realize he's anything but. The realization dawns that something must be done to curb his independence. A few days later, Abhimanyu visits the United Nations headquarters and gives a heartfelt speech, focusing on the youth of his country. He delivers the speech in his mother tongue, Hindi, and everyone around the world listens to it, astounded, a small smile spreading on their faces. However, the journey home brings turmoil. On his way back to India, he finds out from Suhasini that Ajay has leaked the news of Anwita's pregnancy. The media frenzy from the airport to his home is relentless, with reporters and the public demanding answers. At home, Abi finds Anwita distraught. He reassures her, emphasizing the importance of remaining calm for the baby's sake. He advises her to go to Japan to clear her mind, but she says that she will stay with him and they'll face this storm together. After checking on Anwita, Abi goes and resigns from his post. The news of his resignation caused Murli and Ajay happiness. Ajay goes on to a TV interview and further taints Abi's character. Akbar watches the interview with a heavy heart and later visits Abi. The two of them sit down for a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. He tells Abi that his father had a lot of trust in him and the people of this nation. But sadly, he is not seeing what Dashrath wants to happen. He straightforwardly questions his reasons for resigning, and with a small smile on his face. The conversation reveals Abi's unwavering resolve and a mysterious plan brewing in his mind, hinting at a surprising twist. The next morning, he heads over to his cabinet meeting, only to find people opposing him and saying that he cannot make any important decisions since he is only an acting prime minister till the next elections. Upon hearing this, a smile spreads on his face, and he leaves, informing them about a press conference that CBI will hold the next morning. As he leaves, everyone watches him with horror. The unfolding drama promises a battle of wits and wills as Abhi navigates the treacherous waters of politics, driven by a vision only he fully understands. It is revealed that on his final bed, Abhi's father told him about a secret inquiry he had initiated to uncover a mole within their party, working against the nation's interests. This revelation fuels Abi's resolve to root out corruption. Later that day, as Abi is going through the app he talked about with Zafar, Ajay arrives. He complains that Abi hasn't been picking up his calls, hence, he had to come to his place unannounced. AJ attempts to manipulate and influence Abi, but Abi remains unyielding, declaring open war on Ajay and his allies. Abi leaves, determined to protect his nation's future. The next morning, during the CBI press conference, it came to the knowledge that in 2009, the then defense minister, Ajay, committed some serious corruption in the buying of fighter jets. This revelation decimates Ajay's reputation and his bid for the prime minister's position. Public opinion is divided. Some hail Abhi's bravery in exposing his own party member, while others criticize the potential damage to ABKP's reputation, jeopardizing Abhi's own political future. That night, Ajay and Murli drank away their defeat and sorrows. The next morning during the party meeting, Abi is once again nominated as their candidate for the upcoming elections. Abi and Akbar leave the meeting with a triumphant smile etched on their faces. The planning for the upcoming elections starts with full power, with Abhimanyu emphasizing the fact that they should focus on the youth. They start working on bringing reforms for the betterment of the youth and the farmers of the nation. Abi starts going on tours and gives speeches, promising a better future for the people of the country. He even admits it in front of everyone that he loves Anwita and will marry her one day. He gives the people the choice to not give him a vote if they think that his personal life is becoming a hindrance to his work. Time passes with Abi working on bringing reforms for the nation and promising everyone a better future. Every tour and every speech brings him a ton of new fans and followers. Anwita joins Abhi's campaign efforts, pleasantly surprised by the public's warm reception. As election day arrives, anticipation and tension mount. Everyone is curious about the results and waits for the announcement of their new prime minister. Some people are sure that Abhimanyu will win, but some are against him. As the day passes, Abhi starts to worry. 
but Anwita calms him down, saying that he would get 288 seats in the assembly, which would guarantee him a win since at least 273 seats are required to form government. After half of the day has passed, people start to think that Abhi would lose, but still, the other half is remaining. As the day progresses, ABKP starts gaining traction, and finally, Abhimanyu is back in the game. By the end of that fateful day, the long-awaited news finally breaks. ABKP has triumphed in the elections. Overwhelmed with a surge of emotions, Abhimanyu heads to his late father's office. As he steps inside, the weight of his journey and the magnitude of his achievement hit him hard, and tears of relief, pride and sorrow flow freely down his face. His father's presence seems to envelop him, and for a moment, it feels like Dashrath Kal is right there beside him, sharing in his victory. Enwita arrives and holds him in a tight embrace. Outside, the entire nation erupts in joyous celebration. Streets that were once filled with uncertainty and doubt now burst into life with jubilant crowds, firecrackers, and the echo of victory songs. People from all walks of life come together to celebrate the dawn of a new era, led by the young and dynamic Abhimanyu Kal. As the movie draws to a close, we see Abhimanyu and Anwita walking towards a grand stage, hand in hand. Their journey has been a roller coaster of emotions, challenges, and triumphs, but they have faced it all together. Abhimanyu ascends the stage, his heart pounding with pride and anticipation. He looks out at the sea of faces, all turned towards him with hope and admiration. In a powerful and symbolic gesture, he raises his hand in victory. The crowd responds with an overwhelming roar of approval and applause, their cheers resonating through the air like a thunderstorm of support and love. The movie concludes with the fact that Abhimanyu, at just 28 years old, has proven that with unwavering resolve, a vision for a better future, and the support of loved ones, one can surmount even the greatest obstacles.